Our next section then would be talking about the analysis, and here we've got four main things that we're going to be talking about. Reminding ourselves that they have to be about the samples, so if you're considering even thinking about mentioning a population in the analysis, slap yourself on the wrist and don't do it. This is about samples only. So things you want to make sure you put in here are your evidence, your units, and make sure it's comparative. Again, those are the ER words. Bigger, smaller, sadder, happier, things like that. And make sure again that it's about your samples. So the four things that we have to talk about, I'll start with shape. Here you're going to look at your dot plot and focus on your big picture, not the little tiny details. And compare the two graphs. And if you have anything unusual, like huge outliers or a giant cluster of points, Make sure you go describe those. And one last thing that I'm going to mention here real quick is that this has to be in context. So you need to put your variable in there. You need to make sure you're talking about exactly the context of the situation. And in this case, this is apple trees and apples per tree. So if we take a moment real quick to look at the shape of our two dot plots. On this one, I notice that, um, yeah, Again, shapes of these are kind of hard to read sometimes, but I might assume that this is sort of normal. Normal-ish. And I'd say that it's skewed to the left. And this one here is probably, again, sort of normal-ish and skewed right. And skewed. Again, the direction of this skew is the direction that it's being yanked at, the long tail, what direction that is. So that's probably how I'd describe these. Remember, shape is always kind of an approximate thing. We're not taking big enough samples to get a really pretty easy to describe shape here. So here I'm noticing it's not the same amount the whole way across and that um, I do have a bit of a skew. So I'm just going to use sort of normal and skewed left and right. So these are the ones near and these are the ones far. So my write-up for this would be from my samples. Again, hugely important because I'm talking about my samples. I notice the dot plot, again that's my evidence, that's providing me my actual evidence here. For the number of apples per tree, that is my context, um, near the river is roughly normal and skewed to the right, and the dot plot for apples per tree far from the river is also roughly normal, but it is skewed to the left. So by saying it's also roughly normal, I'm again being comparative there, because comparative can be your ER words, but it can also be the same, this idea that something is the same. Um, and then here I'm just saying, but it's skewed to the left. So we see one is to the right, and one is to the left. Um, and again, I've got my context in there, apples per tree, and apples near and far from the river. My second one is all about the spread. And remember, spread is going to be kind of describing our variation. So the things that we're going to look at for spread are going to be your range and your IQR, which is why it's important to calculate them. Remember that your range is always max minus min. And your IQR is going to be the third quarter minus the first quarter. So when I've calculated these, I notice that my range for far is 82, and the range for near is 97. And again, my IQR is roughly 29 and roughly 41. Might round those. But just take a minute and take a look at the graph. What does that mean? So Remember, range talks about how far spread things are and what kind of variation they are. So if I look at these two graphs for a minute, just taking a look at what I see, I notice that they're not too dissimilar, but I do notice that the width of the box is slightly bigger for apples near the river. And that relates to my IQR being bigger, showing me that I have more variation inside the middle 50%. And I notice here the box is slightly smaller, my middle 50% is slightly smaller, so slightly less variation for apples for apple trees far from the river. In my range, you can see that the f near the river is actually quite um, spread out. You see that distance is a little bit bigger. So I've got a further range of apples on the apple trees um, from a maximum all the way down to my minimum. And for apples far trees far from the river, I notice that that range is slightly smaller. So just by looking at this, I can kind of see that I see there's much more variation throughout the whole range and of the middle 50% for apples on the trees near the river. So using the numbers for range and IQR, I can put that into my sentences.
And I noticed that I've actually typoed that one. That's right, we'll fix it up. So I'm just going to put it here. It's um, 82 and 97. So from my samples, again, from my samples, I noticed the apple trees, the apples per tree near the river was slightly more spread out than the apples, number of apples per tree far from the river, as the range near the river was bigger than the range far from the river. So near the river was 87, and far from the river it should be 82. That was the typo. This shows that in my samples there is more variation in the number of apples per tree near the river compared to far from the river. So this is my statement that I've got to have in here at the end to the higher level. What does this tell me about my samples? And again, it's about my sample. This shows me that my samples, in my samples, there is more, that's making it, making it comparative, more variation in the number of apples per tree near the river compared to far from the river. And again, this is variation because I'm talking about spread. And I could probably even be more specific here to say variation overall. Probably be good to say that. So talking then, obviously this is about the range, I'll talk again about the IQR. The spread of the middle 50%, which tells us how wide the IQ, the IQR tells us how wide the middle 50% is. So the spread of the middle 50% for apples near the river is also slightly more spread out than for apples per tree far from the river. As the IQR near is bigger than the IQR far, and we have 41 and 29, and I've rounded here, so round appropriately. If we're talking about whole objects like apples and stuff, it probably makes sense to round. This shows as well that there is slightly more variation, again more variation, of the middle 50% of apples per tree near the river than far from the river in my samples. So if you miss that word sample anywhere, you're going to be very, very pissed off at yourself. So make sure you don't. Right. Next bit here would be the middle 50% shift and overlap. So again, this is taking a look at our box and whisker graph. For the shift, um, is one middle 50% sitting slightly higher up the scale than the other? Um, is it a lot? Is it a little little? Is it just a tiny bit? Um, and for overlap, do the middle 50% um, overlap on the scale? And again, is that a lot or is that a little? And then our last thing again here, what does that tell me about my samples? So if we look quickly at our graph, I notice that the middle 50%, this part here, is um, sitting further up the scale. So you can see it's kind of been pushed, it's sitting further up the scale than where the far from the river is. And you'll notice if you carefully kind of look at this, there's no overlap between the middle 50%. So in fact, the number of apples per tree near the river is sitting much further up the scale with no overlap. So if we put that into our sentence, from my samples, the box and, and the box from my samples, apostrophe from my samples box and whisker graphs, the middle 50% of the number of apples per tree near the river is sitting well to the right of the middle 50% of apples per tree far from the river, and that's my idea of the shift right there that it's sitting far apart. There is no overlap of the middle 50%, and this shows me for my samples. The number of apples per tree is generally more, being comparative, for the trees near the river than, should be a than, than river near, oh, that should be a than, near the river compared to far from the river. Okay. So again, talk about where it's sitting for shift, and then if there is any overlap between them. Could be the other way around, of course, that there is no a lot of overlap, sorry, there's a lot of overlap and no shift. And that's okay to talk about it that way if that's the case. Our medians, and here we'll also probably talk about our means as well, um, is one higher than the other, and again, what does that tell me about my samples? So from my samples, I noticed the median number of apples per tree near the river was higher, there's my comparative, than the median of number of apples per tree far from the river, my evidence. I also noticed that the mean number of apples per tree is higher for trees near the river compared to far from the river, and again, my evidence. And you'll also notice here, when I'm giving my evidence, I've got my units, we're talking about apples here. And again, I missed it on that one, but I've got it in enough other spots, I should be okay. So this shows me that on average, because we're talking about our means and medians, the number of apples per tree near the river is higher 
then the number of apples per tree far from the river in my samples. Again, don't forget that in my samples part. Very important. So this is the analysis. Again, take your time, slow down, double check what you've written. Have you talked about your samples? Have you made it comparative? Have you told me every single time whether one of them is more or less or higher or lower or more varied, anything like that, or even the same, right? Comparative can be the same if you told me that they have the exact same median, if that's the case. But put it into context, talk about apples per tree every single time. Or if, for instance, it is the weight of muscle shells, talk about the weight of muscle shells every single time. But you've got to get it into context every time. And just to reiterate that one more time, context here is again this idea that it's the number of apples per tree near the river. That is what we're talking about. Okay. Or again, that it's the number of apples per tree far from the river. We're putting it into context.